We here on the news with Rick Sanchez like to stay ahead of the curve, as we like to say, and, and, and knowing that it's uh, at times like these, times of worrisome news, right, whether it's wars or, in this case, a potential stock crash, stock market crash, uh, and a potential worldwide pandemic, that is when we believe, as journalists and as citizens, that we probably should be most vigilant about our individual liberties. Why? Because this has happened before. In fact, it's still happening. You know, uh, John Whitehead, he's a civil liberties attorney, he's the president of the Rutherford Institute and the author of uh, Battlefield America, The War on the American People. Now, uh, you don't have to be that old, by the way, Mr. Whitehead, to know that in our last major crisis, the thing called 9-11, somehow we were the ones, not the people who attacked us, we as Americans ended up losing many of our freedoms, Patriot Act, et cetera. Here we are now in a similar situation where we have a potential pandemic, where our privacy is obviously going to be affected. We have a potential stock market crash. Are you as worried about this, and should we be vigilant, and why? Well, you have to be vigilant because uh, the way the surveillance state operates now, I call us one nation under surveillance, basically. Everything we're doing is being watched. The NSA is downloading 2 billion emails daily. They're watching everything we're doing. Facebook, uh, your photos at DMV are being given over to the government. At least 50 percent of Americans now are on a facial recognition uh, database. So we're in a mess, you know, and you have uh, the government's paranoid about uh, veterans coming back from overseas. They have a program called Operation Vigilant Eagle. They're watching all types of uh, whatever veterans say on uh, Facebook or their emails. And we defend cases where veterans are arrested for that. But uh, at the Rutherford Institute. But, yeah, I think we should really be worried because uh, whether or not it becomes a real, whatever you call, virus or scare, the, uh, there are people in government that take advantage of it. And uh, what I see in uh, the American government today is there's a bit of paranoia about American citizens and people who are opposed to government. Anybody that says, uh, I don't like the way the government's operating, I don't like the, the president, I don't like Congress, automatically goes on a watch list. And uh, we've had some cases where, uh, again, uh, mm. the police show up with the Department of Homeland Security and drag people out of their home for doing uh, Facebook posts. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. I, I've, heard you, uh, I've, I've heard you talk about this, and, and this is Operation Vigilant Eagle that most people don't know anything about, but they, I want them to know about it. That's why I'm glad you're here. Tell us about Operation Vigilant Eagle uh, and what it, what it really is. It's a Department of Homeland Security, uh, Security program, DHS. They're watching returning veterans. Uh, again, uh, one of the, the classic cases we had was with a young uh, Marine named Brandon Robb, who, 26-year-old, decorated Marine, by the way, took uh, weapons away from al-Qaeda, defused mines for his fellow uh, soldiers, was at his home uh, near Richmond, Virginia, typing one morning after jogging uh, on his uh, had his home business he was doing. He heard a weird noise outside. He looks out his door and there's a car, cop cars pulling up outside and people in black suits with the black ties running toward his home. Comes as a SWAT team and accompanied with uh, federal agents from all the agents, FBI, they, and they swarmed his home and he goes, what's wrong? What did I do? And he didn't own a weapon, by the way. That was huh. the key. And uh, they said, we don't like your Facebook post. There's something you're, some, some of the things you're saying were very concerned. Wow. Could you step? He stepped out. They grabbed him, handcuffed him behind his back like that, slammed him against the fence, cut his back, took him to the police station. He had a five-minute examination in a jail cell by a psychiatrist. Uh, Mr. Rob Brandon was, uh, he's a 9-11 truther. And, the, and the, the psychiatrist said because he was there, he obviously was mentally ill. He was put in the mental hospital. We had to file a lawsuit to get him out. What was amazing, though, and I found out about this, is that these are called civil commitments. 20,000 alone in Virginia, where wow. he was at. 1.5 million world, I mean, in America, 1.5 million a year people are disappearing into these uh, hospitals and, because and, and, they're and, arrested and, and, for something the, they might be saying. But in the pretext This is, is in America. The pretext is Vigilant Eagle that they arrest these people for these types of things. Operation Vigilant Eagle, yeah, they're watching. And again, I have these vet veterans contact Good. me. Uh, another case we had where a fellow... Uh, 
uh, d just did a short well, email to a friend about some exercises, and, 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 and the, the, they show up and they're going to take him out of the country, they said. This is a, a decorated veteran. And, and in this We're country, that across well, but, the country. But, but, but the, the point is, right, in this country, you have a right to be dumb, you have a right to be stupid, and you have a right to be insulting. And nobody has a right to come and take you to prison and or you jail. You have a right to say what you, what's to on say your mind. What you yeah. think as long as you're not, yeah, I'll tell you what. Good. Hey, listen, we're out of time. Good segment. We Let's have a get First Amendment that says that, yes. Yeah, it certainly does, and I'm glad you're standing up for it. Thank you so much, Mr. Whitehead. We appreciate your time.